Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Well, good morning. Uh, can I just say thank you to anyone uh, who helped with yesterday. Susie and I renewed our vows in here yesterday and then we had a bit of a garden party, I guess you call it, afterwards uh, uh, in our place. We had a wonderful day, so thank you for all those who prayed for us or were involved in that. The problem is I think Susie now feels that she needs to be treated that way the whole of the time, so... <laughs> Which of course she does. So. We're going to sing our first song of worship, number 66, so let's turn in our books to 66, because I've completely forgotten what it is. <laughs> Be Thou My Vigil. I should have known that, shouldn't I? We sang that yesterday. <laughs> so let's stand to sing Be Thou My Vision. <laughs> have a seat. We come to worship our God and so it's always good to prepare our hearts for that. Take a moment to be quiet and then put to side one thi the things that are on that perhaps pulling you away from God right now for a moment will be quiet.
and so together we say our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the faults of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. So we pause for a moment to reflect on our life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all as we confess together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, Forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord Amen If we're able to should we stand as we declare the Gloria together and as part of our worship we say together Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth Lord God Heavenly King Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Do have a seat as we come to our prayer of the week, where uh, we sort of built a tradition where we pause for a moment and just say thank you to God for something in your life. So uh, for some of us, that's going to be easy right now. Um, for me, it certainly will be, as I thank God for yesterday. But maybe bring to mind something for you to thank God for before I pray the collect. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are worth nothing. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts the most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We're going to have our first reading now. So. 
and it's going to be read from X. The reading is taken from Acts chapter 9, beginning at the verse 1, Saul's conversion. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men travelling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, and when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind, and did not eat or drink anything. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you, Anne. So we're going to sing our, our next hymn now, which is 834, Will You Come and Follow Me? So let's stand if we're able to as we sing, Will You Come and Follow Me? reading from chapter 9 beginning at verse 51 hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke glory to you O Lord 
As the time approached for him to be taken up to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. And he sent messengers on ahead, who went into a Samaritan village to get things ready for him. But the people there did not welcome him, because he was heading for Jerusalem. When the disciples James and John saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call fire down from heaven to destroy them? But Jesus turned and rebuked them. Then he and his disciples went to another village. As they were walking along the road, a man said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. He said to another man, Follow me. But he replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Still another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus replied, No one who puts a hand to the plough and looks back is fit for the service in the kingdom of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Do have a seat as I invite Fleur up to talk to us today. Uh, you'll um, remember that, um, as I said, I think last week, uh, when Bishop, Chris, Bishop Christopher, oh, I shouldn't say that, when Bishop Jonathan arrived uh, not long ago, um, he went round and toured the diocese and spoke to people. Um, and he, so, he, he was reminding us to take courage about where we are in our mission. Uh, and basically saying that we have everything we need to be missionary people here in Bedhampton. And so we've got a little mini-series on that. Fleur's doing the second one today. So let's just pray for her before she speaks to us. Father, we thank you for Fleur and for the giftings that you've given her as she explores what you would have her do. And we pray, Father, that uh, you will use her personality, her energy and her mind to speak to us today that your spirit will be with her and she will know your spirit as she encourages us. Amen. Morning. I, um, I must admit, I knew the title, Take Courage, um, but I didn't know it was around the Bishop Jonathan. But actually, I was there when Bishop Jonathan said that, so it's all very much coming together. And I used to work for the Salvation Army, um, and we used to say that a lot within the Salvation Army, in that actually we should be a resource-driven church. Um, and that's not in terms of acquiring and seeking resources, but it's about recognising what resources we already have. And resources come in lots and lots of different forms. They come in, some automatically go to money, um, but it's buildings, but mostly it's people. Um, and that's the wonderful thing about a church in that we are the body of Christ and we have everything we need. Um, and we tailor what we do based on what we have. Um, and then that means that we recognise our gifts first and foremost and what God has blessed us with. Um, but I'm not going to talk about that today. That was just a little, little, little mini take home for you. Um, we, uh, I'm just going to reflect on what... So Polly spoke last week and she spoke about David and Goliath. And that was really exciting. And she had really three really lovely key points. And it was to be yourself, to use the skills you have, and don't be afraid when other people laugh at you or try and put you down. My talk isn't going to be as succinct as Polly's because um, Polly is really, really good and structured. Mine's a bit more... Um, kind of rambling and then we get to a beautiful point at the end um so i would say just kind of sit back um so yeah um the morning we this morning we had the reading uh, from acts and that was really about saul's conversion from violent persecutor of, the, of christians uh, to a preacher of christ who shaped the history of christianity and the world um, and it's, a, it's an amazing story. Um, and Saul, who became Paul, preached about Christ throughout the whole of the Roman Empire. He wrote letters to the churches and he, that he helped form. Um, and these became part of the New Testament. Uh, they're called the Epistles of Paul. And I list them, but I actually I don't think we could be bothered to go through them all. You can um, flick through them at your own leisure. And actually what's really nice is to take the letters um, and to read a letter in a, in a, in a block um, in one go. 
Um, and that's really, really refreshing because quite often from Paul's letters we get little snippets of verses because they're so beautiful take home. You know, you know, you can journal them and you see posters and postcards of them. But actually, the letters in their entirety are quite a refreshing. And I often listen to them on audio while I'm walking. Um, because actually it is a letter, somebody's writing it to somebody else, so it's nice to hear it as well as you would kind of hear, hear someone's voice. So, kind of step back. Paul was very religious zeal, fanatical about religious practices of the time and uncompromising about his beliefs. Um, earlier in Acts, this is Acts 7, we hear of Stephen, a man full of grace and love, who did great wonders and miraculous signs among the people brought he was brought before the Sanhedrin, falsely accused of blasphemy. So the Sanhedrin and the Pharisees were very much the kind of, um, you know, the, the, the Jewish stronghold of the time. And, uh, and obviously we know how, how that went with Jesus. Um, so again, we've got Stephen who's brought forward, accused, falsely accused of blasphemy. Uh, and Stephen gives the most amazing speech, Act 7. Uh, and it's awe-inspiring. It's so filled with the Holy Spirit. And Stephen is martyred as a result. But all Stephen sees is glory of God, of Jesus in heaven standing at the right hand of God. But where does Saul come into this? And this is a bit like a little Agatha Christie because we get two little snippets that show us how nasty Saul is. Um, so in the background of this total biblical highlight, 57b on um, chapter 7 in Acts, the witnesses laid their clothes at a young man named Saul. And the second little snippet we get, then he, Stephen, fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them as he's being martyred. And when he said this, he fell asleep, Stephen, and Saul was there giving approval to his death. So horrible was Saul that he personifies all the key characters in Jesus' death. The Pharisees, those who witnesses, witnessed and mocked Jesus' death, those who withstood um, stood by and stole his clothes and those who ordered his death. You know, Saul was the, was the personification of all that evil. And so we come to today's passage that, that Anne read. You know, Saul is continuing to see seek out the followers of the way, the followers of, of Jesus with murderous threats. So how did Paul go from Saul, chief persecutor, to Paul, follower of Christ and shaper of the Christian world. Well, it happened on the road to Damascus, and it's called a Damascus Road moment. I'm just going to read that snippet. Jesus says, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus, who you are persecuting. Now get up and go to the city, and you will be told what you must do. Who are you, Lord? And I wonder how Paul said this. Had he already been having his doubts about his actions? You know, who are you, Lord? What is your character? Or was it a total surprise? Who are you, Lord? And I wonder if anyone here has had their own Damascus moment where they shifted their thinking and they were converted in a very dramatic way. And I wonder if you remember how the Holy Spirit made you feel at that time or how you felt with the Holy Spirit within you. And, and do you still feel that now? Uh, for me, I don't think I've had a Damascus moment. And we were talking about that in our home group. Um, my, my faith has always been a kind of constant. I never had a kind of revelation. I just knew, always knew that I had a faith. My, my family aren't Christian. It was just something within me. Um, and, and whether or not it was a Damascus moment like Paul's or an always present feeling of faith, there is a point where we all should decide whether or not we're all in in this faith journey. Paul's conversion and life after was not sunshine and rainbows at all. He was shipwrecked, imprisoned, starved, dehydrated, penniless, criticised, but he was all in. He courageously turned from his past and away from everything he knew. And he was so good at being murderous. You know, he was so affirmed in what he was doing. He wrote letters and said, oh, can I, can I go and kill them? And off they sent him. You know, he was good at this. So it took a massive amount of courage to, to recognise his past, to ask for forgiveness for that and to turn around. You know, people he loved and he grew up with, he would never see again and he would never share those moments again with, thank goodness. Um, we went to Spring Harvest and unfortunately this is turning a bit like... Um, granddad from old fools and horses in the war when we went to spring harvest um we learned a new song 
Uh, and it went like this. There were actions. I will give them to you because it would be funny. So it went, I'm all in, we're all in, we're all in this together. And it went on and on and on and like that. So it just repeats in my head. So when I heard um, this, uh, these readings, I was like, well, it, it's about being all in. You know, there's, you know, if you're ever going to say who was all in, it's going to be Paul. Um, but also, when you're all in, there's a cost. You know, like Paul, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. And that's um, the passage that we heard in Luke. When I first became a parent, I was conscious that I didn't want to say no. When I became, I so said, what, Grace is nine. At that time, of, and I think parenting is very kind of generational. It moves, you know, depending on that, that, you know, the preferences of the time. When Grace was born, it was very much, you know, don't say no to the children all the time. I think that's because, obviously, I was a child of the 80s, and I think we always got told, no, shut up. <laughs> so it was very much, you know, you know, like, talk to your children, you know enjoy them um, you know don't say no so I was you know I was really conscious about not saying no so I developed another phrase and it was called let me first you know let me first get in the door let me first put the bags down let me first go to the toilet let me first make tea um, and the children soon learn that actually this let me first was just another way of saying no um, and I think coming back to that passage of Luke and I don't know if you remember it um, you know this is what kind of Jesus means when he says, don't bury your father, follow me. Um, don't say goodbye to your family, follow me. There's that passage in Luke where he says, let me first say goodbye to my family. Well, actually, Jesus knows that there's, there's just another way of saying no. And it's really important to get this right because actually these things like saying goodbye to family and burying loved ones are perhaps the most important things we'll ever do in our lives here on earth but they are not and they will never be more important than Jesus and nor will your job and nor will your house uh, and nor will all the hundreds and hundreds of conflicting priorities and that that's what Jesus is saying when he says no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God you have to be all in there will always be things in our lives that are important. Jesus is not saying that. That's why he's using the example of burying your father. Um, and I think Nicky Gumbel's really interesting. So he, um, he's kind of head of the Alpha. Um, and on his Twitter feed, it's got um, follower of Christ, husband, father. And that's really, really important because... No matter what you've got going in on your life, Jesus must always come first. You know, world peace, Jesus comes first. Nuclear disaster, Jesus comes first. Because if we situate ourselves correctly, then everything trickles down and everything is, is, is warmed in this beautiful golden glow of Jesus. And, and that, to me, is what's really important about marriage. And I was reading the, and I was thanking Max to ask everyone to prompt to pray for marriage because marriage is really hard. But your marriage doesn't come first. Jesus comes first. And that's what Nikki Gumbel's Twitter feed so highlights so quickly. And also in terms of children, I think that's, you know, marriage, children. You know, because without... That, that structure, you know, obviously, then um, th that, that suffers. So, the conversion of Paul came at a cost, and there is a cost to following Jesus. And this is where our courage is needed from our past to our fu future. And that's courage to be all in, courage to deny what seems incredibly important. Foxes have holes, birds in the air have nests, but the Son of God has nowhere to lay his head. And reading this, I was initially sad that Jesus couldn't rest. But reflecting on being all in, as, we, as we've previously done, I've realised that pitying Jesus isn't what this passage means. We follow Jesus to heaven, to our death, because there is nowhere on earth in which he rests. He is not here. He has risen. The place we occupy here is temporal. We are temporal. Truly, the only place Jesus rests is beyond death. It's beyond the temporal. And so the only place we need to follow Jesus is to heaven, is to our own death. 
and back to Paul, who puts it best in this passage from Philippians. And I'm doing something which I told you not to do, and just taking an excerpt, but it's, it's beautiful. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. But it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. We have to take courage. We have to turn from our past. We have to take courage and face the cost of following Jesus. We have to be all in, because what is else is there? Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Amen. Yeah, almost fell over. <laughs> So, anyway, right, let's take a moment to be quiet and just reflect very briefly on what Fleur has shared. Are we all in? That was really helpful. And then in a moment we'll say our creed. So let's just be quiet for a second. So Lord, whatever you've placed on our hearts after hearing you speak through Fleur, may we not forget that this week. Would your spirit prompt us, we pray. Amen. Let's stand if we're able to as we declare this faith that we're all in with in our, in our creed. And uh, we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Do have a seat as Sandra brings us our intercessions for this week, our prayers. Let us pray. Dear God, as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, may the light of your presence set our hearts on fire with love for you. We pray for your world, giving thanks for the beauty of creation and asking that we might always be given eyes to see your glory in the world. Amen. We pray for all who are exploited by others, for people who have to work for less than a fair wage, for those who live in fear of violence and torture, and those denied freedom of speech or movement. We pray also for the innocent victims of war and terrorism, especially in the Ukraine and in Syria and the victims of natural disaster, particularly Afghanistan, where rescue can be hampered. 
Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who share our lives at home, school, work and leisure, and especially for our young people, growing up in an unstable and often confusing world. Help us to appreciate them, be open to their insights and nurture their faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. Lord, we pray that all within your church may be enabled to fulfill their vocation. At this Peter tide, we remember those seeking to serve you through their baptism, confirmation or ordination. And we especially pray for our new curate, Jill, as she is ordained deacon at the cathedral on Saturday. May she feel secure in our love and support. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Max and Susie, celebrating their 30th wedding anniversary tomorrow. We thank you for the love which binds them together as husband and wife. May they praise you for the past, thank you for the present, and trust in you for the future. Lord, we place into your arms all who are hurting today, in body, mind or spirit, those known to us, those on our weekly sheet, and those known to you alone. We remember the lonely and those without help and we bring before you the families and friends of those who have recently died. And in a moment of quiet, we remember those close to our own hearts. And finally, Lord, help us to remember that everything we have and all that we are comes from you. May we use our gifts to promote the knowledge of your love to the world. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the the sake sake of of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you very much, Sandra. Thank you for praying for Jill as well, who is ordained on Saturday. If you need a lift down there, uh, it's a busy day Saturday, isn't it? Lots going on. But if you hope to go and you need a lift, just get in touch with me or the office and we shall welcome her on Saturday. But should we stand as we share community? We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and build up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise for your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word through whom you have created all things, who were sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son. Born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross, and he put an end to death by dying for us, and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will, and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by you, the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit all honour and glory be yours almighty Father forever and ever. Amen. And so from page 17, we say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. And so my friends, draw near with faith and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him. And that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. The body of Christ, broken for all God's people. The blood of Christ, shed for all God's people. Loving Father, we thank you for feeding us at the supper of your Son. Sustain us with your Spirit, that we may serve you here on earth until our joy is complete in heaven, and we share in the eternal banquet with Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say our prayer of thanks together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. 
dying and living. He declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. It's been lovely to share communion with you this morning. I've really enjoyed that. I was feeling a bit tired when I walked in this morning, but uh, it's refreshed me. Um, not too much in the way of news. Um, just to say we've got the summer show next weekend as well, so uh, it's back after, I guess, three years really, isn't it? So, uh, so uh, if there are some leaflets still to be distributed at St Nick's, if you're able to do any of that early this week, that would be really helpful. Um, and also to say that the Mother's Union service that was going to be on Tuesday is not going to happen, but there will be the usual Mother's Union meeting as well at St Nick's. 2 p.m., for a quiz and games, it says. So, uh, um, and as I said earlier on, don't, uh, don't forget that Jill's being ordained this weekend. Um, so be praying for her. And if you want to lift there, uh, let us know. And we've got a, a welcome lunch uh, in a few weeks' time uh, when she gets back from a short break that I'm kicking her off on. So, uh. But for now, we're going to sing uh, one of my favourite songs. So uh, we're going to be singing 467. Lord of all hopefulness, let's stand if we can. I hope you stay for a tea and a coffee and a slice of anniversary cake. Uh, but for now, a blessing on you. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God. And of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.
Amen.